I'm good over there. We're good. Cool. What's going on, fellas? Ladies? Everybody? All the people out there in the interwebs? I'm Nick. I'm Eric. And we're talking a fair sports. Oh, man. So, I had an interview with Dave Sims today. And uh, my internet crashed out. Or not my internet, but my program crashed out while I was in the middle of recording the interview. So, um, I will come out with, uh, I guess, text uh, writing of how the conversation went. But unfortunately, we lost the footage. So. Yeah. There we go. So, we lost the footage of the Dave Sims interview, unfortunately, but I will get out all of the information that uh, he got out to us. But we are uh, talking to Fair Sports. Um, yep, I knew that was coming. We were uh, we were out uh, last week. wasn't feeling too good, but I'm feeling a lot better now. So here we are. It is episode 38. How was your week? Nice jersey, Rick. <laughs> Thanks, Devin. Uh, man, well, other than the circle games, apparently racist. Um, yeah, what's up with that, man? I hm, okay. Uh, I don't really know. Yeah, actually, so from what I'm reading, apparently um, it's showing uh, like white supremacy. I guess. I guess. Doesn't I, make sense to me. That's a game that I've been playing since I was in junior high. And before that, I mean brought to you by Malcolm in the Middle. Shout out Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah, I mean it's <laughs> I don't get it. And I, I saw that I think that was I saw that on Sunday after the Cubs game. Yeah. And I I, I watched that video and I was like, oh great. Here we go. Social media is going to be ruined. Everything's just going to just irritate me today. I don't understand and why then, why it is a, the thing that it is. I don't. Well, I see. I really don't think it is because everyone that I saw talk about it was like, it didn't matter what their ideology was or whatever. They're like, don't mess with Circle Game. It's great. Right. I don't understand how it got to the point that it got to um, on the broadcast system for the uh, sports world, I guess you would say. But I don't think it's racist. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, you can share your show in my group, uh, Rise Up Sports Podcast Group. All right, Andre, I will definitely do that. Thank you cool. so much. Uh, shout out Rise Up Podcast or Rise Up Sports Podcast Group. Go check that out. Well, and remember, it was I. I wish I could remember the name of the hurricane, but that hit uh, North Carolina, and some one of the guys in the um, that was high up in the Coast Guard that was doing some kind of press conference or whatever. Or there was some random guy in the background who did that, and they straight up reassigned him. Oh uh, well, <laughs> that's unprofessional, you know. Yeah, but they they did it because of. They said it was a racist symbol or, or something like that. I think so, this is people online trolling. I think that's what it is. I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah, it's you know, just like people just don't want other people to be happy or they just want to find something to complain about. I don't, I don't know what it is. but Circle Game's not racist in my eyes, but maybe I'm just wrong. I don't know. No, and I don't think so because I mean, I've seen – People from of every you know race, religion, sexual orientation play whatever. the circle game. Play circle game. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't care. The only thing that matters is if you look. All right, and then you get punched. Exactly. Yeah, pretty simple. Why don't you guys over at the MLB Network grow up a little bit? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, grow up a little bit. Play the circle game. Join the game. You might like it. You might like it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Circle Game. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Blake. <laughs> oh, man. So we've had a crazy week in sports. Uh, you know, 
I don't know where you want to start. It's been a we we missed two weeks because of uh, me being sick, but uh, you know, I don't know where you want to start. There's been a lot going on. Um, I don't want to hit a whole bunch of stuff just because uh, we want to have uh, one of our debates that we've talked about doing for a little while, and we're gonna do uh, the best infielders for baseball of all time at some point during this cast. Um, but I also forgot to say, uh, go check out Tabby's Coffee in the Everett Library. Uh, tell her talk interference sports sent you. So shout out uh, Tabby's Coffee. Um, and we also have a Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Check us out, talk interference sports. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go. Oh, yeah. And also go to seatgeek.com when you're buying sports tickets. Uh, use promo code GCSN and get $20 off your purchase. Um, now that we've gone over that. Um, Doug Baldwin, Cam Chancellor. Officially cut from the Seahawks. Cut, and officially Doug Baldwin has retired. Oh, I didn't Officially, see that. yeah. He wrote a letter to himself on Twitter talking about his journey and how um, – Did he address it to Doug Baldwin from Doug yeah, Baldwin? Yeah, so he was writing a letter to young Doug Baldwin saying, hey, you know, this is going to happen oh. and, and there's there will be endeavors type of a thing and, and we'll grow stronger – and things will, you know, things will be good. So, um, and then he basically uh, quoted uh, Game of Thrones and said, my watch is over. So the retirement of Doug Baldwin is official. Man. That guy has to be the number two greatest wide receiver of Seahawks franchise. I don't think there's any debate. Steve Largent, number one. Doug yeah. Baldwin, number two. And I think Doug Baldwin, if he had played a little bit longer, could have probably passed Steve Largent. Yeah, I think – I. yeah. I agree with that. I mean, I don't know off the top of my head Steve Largent's numbers or anything like that. I don't either. So I can't really compare the two, but just the – iconic status that he has in Seattle. Sorry, we have a puppy down here messing with us. <laughs> Sorry, we're good. Keep going. I, I think kind of would lead me more to, you know, side with you, but um, you know, I I mean, Doug, I don't know if even, you look the numbers, maybe Doug Walden I I didn't. I don't know. I didn't and I mean we could, but we don't really need to divulge into that too much. I don't think that's super necessary. The guy's definitely, I think, deserves to be in the ring of honors for the Seahawks. Uh, I 100% the, the agree. Impact that that guy made on and off the field was uh, definitely ring of honors worthy, in my opinion. And I just, I mean, the one thing that I really liked about about him was not only was he a great athlete and did everything else on the field, but how he also, how he conducted himself and was just like, he, he just let his game speak for him. Right. Right. And I, I always like when players do that. Give me one second. Yeah. So keep going, keep going. Uh, Doug Baldwin. Uh, I think definitely, uh, unfortunately not able to make the, uh, the, uh, physical to uh, get him to play for another season. Right. But how about Cam Chancellor? How about Cam oh. Chancellor? <coughs> Where do you see him on the uh, the ranking systems of all-time Seahawks? Oh, he's right up there, I'd Right say. up there, yeah. The guy, I class mean, act big time too, Devin, Devin says. Yeah, for sure. I mean, where exactly, like, in a top 10 scenario? I don't know where I would I, put him. I don't know where I'd put him, but, man, that guy was fun to play, fun to watch play. Most yeah, definitely. Was, and just the way like, he just – you could tell that when he played, he, he didn't hold back at all. It didn't matter what was going on with him. He just went out there. He had one thing to do. And he did it. And he did it, and he did it extremely. I would say extremely well. I would say so too. So, you know, thanks for all of all of everything you guys did. It was great watching you play. Uh, I hope you guys have some more impact on some of these young players coming in this year. So, 
Yeah, I wonder if they would keep him around as kind of like uh, the Mariners did with Edgar, Edgar Martinez yeah. or, or Ichiro. Or... You would like to think so, right? I would I mean, hope so. I, I, I mean, those guys are, have got to be, at least in this area, some of the best that have played their positions. So Most why, definitely. why wouldn't you have a guy like that around on your team, even just in an advisory capability, I don't understand why they would to help or you wouldn't. Grow. Yeah, those, those guys definitely could make an impact on on the young players, especially these ones that have chips on their shoulder. Mm-hmm. You got DK Metcalf, who was supposed to be drafted way higher, um, and that's basically what the Seahawks have always done: is is drafted these guys or picked up these guys undrafted with a chip on their shoulder and basically make these guys, you know, superstar athletes. So yeah. Uh, I hope maybe Doug Baldwin does a little bit of molding of uh, DK, but uh, you know, he can. There's, there's a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, speculation on whether or not he'll be in uh, the organization after his retirement. But uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, and even if he's not, you know, best of luck to both of those guys. Seriously, so. seriously. Um, did you see that the Seahawks signed Geno Smith? So they have Geno Smith and Paxton Lynch as their backup quarterbacks. Huh. Do you think uh, Paxton Lynch would be a better backup quarterback for the Seahawks, or do you think Geno Smith would? I honestly have no idea. Okay. <clears throat> that's, a fa- that's a fair answer. Um, I think <clears> – <throat> The best way I could put me describing Geno Smith would be uh, a significantly lesser version of Russell Wilson in, in his mobility and arm strength. But I think uh, Paxton Lynch would probably be a little bit more poised. Okay. So I feel like uh, Paxton's probably going to win the backup job, and I don't know if we'll see Geno Smith even remotely – on the Seahawks. But if you don't know, you know, you don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm mean, just from that, though. I mean, compare Russell Wilson now to, you know, what he was in 2015. You know, is his arm strength the same? Or, you know, is, I think he's gotten better. I think he's gotten better. I think he's gotten – I don't know – after one season, because, you know, last season he wasn't at – he didn't move around as much. Right. And I don't know whether that was because he can't or because they don't want to take that risk with him anymore. Right. Um, Sean says Gino is going to take Wilson's job. Yeah, you probably, man. <laughs> You're crazy, bro. Um, yeah, so – those, that's, that's basically what – what's up, gents? Do the Blazers have a chance against the Warriors, Mark asks. I would like to think so. I like how C.J. McCollum uh, pulled up and did the next man up in game seven when Dame wasn't doing what uh, he had been doing basically in the entire series uh, of the last series. So I think it's possible that it could happen, um, you know, and if I'm not mistaken, I think KD's still out. Yes. So with KD still out, I think there's a huge <laughs> chance that they could pull it off. But, um, you know, the, the Warriors are the best at the, the next man up type of a situation. And when one guy's not doing what he's supposed to, the next guy does in significant fashion. Um, and there's nights when two, three guys are, are just killing it. And, and that's why they've won as many championships on that team as they have. Um, I think there's a chance. I think it could happen. But if I'm betting on it, I'm taking the Warriors. Yeah, I definitely think there's a chance. But um, I'm just going to go with being a Sonics fan. Go Warriors. <clears throat> yeah, I'm more of a KD fan than, than uh, me hating the Trailblazers. So, I mean... Both are accurate. 
So um, whichever way you want to go with it, I'm still going with the Warriors. Right. Okay. So uh, why don't you get on some of that rugby stuff that we got going on here? I have a, a one through nine ranking system real quick go ahead. Uh, for MLR. I got San Diego Legion at one. I got NOLA Gold at two. The Toronto Arrows at three. The Seattle Seawolves at four. Man, they've been dropping off. Uh, the New York Rugby United, uh, five, Glendale Raptors, six, Utah Warriors, seven, Houston Sabercats, eight, and Austin Elite, nine. Is that kind of what you're looking at, too? Um, actually, my news was not in the MLR. It was, okay. <clears throat> you know, Team USA. Gotcha. Okay. So go so, ahead. Okay. Tell me. Yeah, tell me about so, it. It's the uh, USA Women's Sevens. They just had a tournament in Canada over the weekend, and they took bronze, and that's their fourth medal finish this year. <clears throat> and they're the only team in the Women's World Series that Hold have on. keep going keep that have placed in the top four in all of the tournaments that have been played so far, and that got them a number two in the world ranking. And so the next tournament in England in a couple weeks, all they have to do is go on the field and earn one more team point, and they automatically qualify for the 2020 Olympics. Huh? Oh, Uh, yeah, because at the end of this season, or end of the tournament season, the top four teams are going to automatically qualify for the Olympics. Okay. And only uh, – hold on. Let me look this up because it's either <clears> – Sorry, guys. I have a puppy running around causing a, a nuisance. They're only eight points behind the number one team in the world, and that's New Zealand. New Zealand. Oh, okay. All right. And then there's – 25 points in between them and fifth place England guy on Twitter says, can I talk to you guys? You mean like on the phone or, I mean, you can chat in the chat, always respond to in the, in the chat. But, um, so how far back are they from making the, the, uh, Olympics again? All they have to do in the next tournament is take the field and they automatically earn the one point they need to automatically qualify for the There you go. Okay. So I'm looking forward to that. So is that all you got on some rugby? That's all I got. All right. So we were talking a little bit about some NBA earlier. I'll just go ahead and go over the Pelicans win the number one lotto pick. I think everybody was kind of suspecting that the Knicks would get it, but uh, the Pelicans got it. And uh, seems like they'll be drafting Zion Williams. Uh, Golden State is ahead of Portland, one to nothing right now. And Milwaukee and Toronto play tonight. So that's your NBA. Um, and then in NHL, we got San Jose is tied with St. Louis, one and one, and Boston is smoking Carolina, three to nothing. And so, they play tonight, right? Uh, Boston and Carolina. I think they they played last night, I believe. I mean, so I'm so like thrown off. I think St. Louis plays tonight. Oh, I'm not yeah, mistaken. Now. Yeah, they're playing right now, and San Jose is beating them two to nothing. So, boo. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that's uh, that's fun. Sorry, I'm a Blues fan. <laughs> Uh, do you think that the Boston Bruins will win the Stanley Cup this year? I think they're the uh, looking like the favorites right now, man. I think they're looking like the favorites. I think they're possibly um, – there's no way that they're going to lose to Carolina at this point. I think that's pretty safe to say. Yeah, it's just whether it's a sweep or – Yeah, game. or a, a game or two maybe. But they're not – Carolina's not winning four games in a row against the way that Boston's been playing. Hmm. Boston will definitely win this series. But stacking up against um, St. Louis or San Jose, I think San Jose has a better chance of beating Boston. But uh, I don't think either San Jose or St. Louis will beat Boston. 
Uh, I wouldn't have said that two series ago for Boston, but uh, after the way they came out cracking Carolina, uh, that's kind of where I'm at. I said that two series ago about the hurricane either. Nope, that's true. All right, that's what I got for NHL as well. And so we're done with uh, NBA. We're done with NHL, and we're done with MLR. So we wanted to do something different, change it up here. Um, it's been a while since we've actually discussed something other than just reading some news and, and talking about some news. And so we decided that we were going to go ahead and do um, a discussion about the top three uh, positions for infield Uh I didn't get to shortstop, but we can discuss it. And I didn't get to uh, catcher, but we can discuss it if you want. But let's uh, well, let's see catcher either. So let's see where we go from uh, first base, second base, and third base, and and we'll look at our time. And uh, after the time has allotted, or if we reach our allotted time for the uh, show, we'll we'll save it for another day. Maybe we'll do catcher, shortstop, and outfield. And a pitcher, maybe. We'll cover all the bases. Ha. <laughs> all right, so why don't you hit me with, with some first base real quick? All right, first base. So you, so you want to go, I do one, you do one, or do you want me to do all three and then? Um, why don't you, we'll, we'll start, this is the way we'll do it. We'll go, you give me your third best, and I'll give you my third best, and we'll discuss how we go from there. All right, awesome. at first base, uh, number three, I'm taking uh, Keith Hernandez. Okay. Five-time All-Star, two championships. Um, Who did he play for? He – damn, I didn't write that down. Damn, bro. <laughs> he played. That's all it needs to – Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, his career batting average was 296 with – 2,182 hits, 162 home runs, and 1,000. How many home runs? 162. 162, okay. And 1,071 RBIs. What's his last name? Hernandez. Keith Hernandez. <coughs> hmm. He played for the Cards. He played for the Cardinals. Okay. All right. I like that. So what made him land higher for you than, uh, I guess, other guys? Basically that batting average? Yeah, I, a, a lot of, you know, a lot of the basemen, unless you go real, like, old – basically all of their stats are their batting stats. Right. So I appreciate that you pick somebody that was an 11 time gold glove award winner. That's phenomenal. Did you get that? Actually, I didn't write that down. Yeah, that's phenomenal. I was a little tired when I got to first base and I just yeah. wanted to be done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey. Sorry, I got animals acting crazy. Um, five-time All-Star, two and World and, Series. I also try and stick away from Wikipedia because you never really know no, the information. Fact, yeah, it's maybe not so factual. I'm sure it is, but... I feel you. I get you. Uh, two-time Silver Slugger mm -hmm. and El Batting Champion. And uh, he is in the New York Mets Hall of Fame. Okay, that's a solid pick at three. I like that. I won't debate that. Um, I put, I believe, Jeff Bagwell for the Houston Astros. I put Jeff Bagwell because of his four-time All-Star NL MVP and Rookie of the Year in 91. Oh. He's a Gold Glove Award winner in 94 and three-time Silver Slugger. Uh, he led the uh, NL and RBIs in 94. And the Astros have put him in the Hall of Fame for uh, the Astros and have retired his number five. He is a member of the uh, 
Baseball Hall of Fame and was inducted in 2017 with 86.2% on a seventh ballot. And so I got Jeff Bagwell at three. Okay. Okay. Who you got at two? David Ortiz. David Ortiz. <laughs> <laughs> really, man? You knew that. You knew that was coming. Mm. <laughs> Tell me why you got David Ortiz. Uh, I got David Ortiz because he's a 10-time All-Star, a three-time um, World Series champion, and a seven-time Silver Slugger. But it, defensively, did he really do – I mean, he's he's mostly known for, for being DH. a DH, but he did play first base. Okay, well, then why did – okay, so when when we're because talking want, about third base, I can put Edgar Martinez there? I want to talk about if you want to. No. Stop it. I'm still going to put David Ortiz Oh, my there. gosh. Man. Okay. <laughs> so, he had a 286 batting average, right? Boston Red Sox have retired his number. Um, Seven-time Silver Slugger. Uh, AL home run leader in 2006. AL RBI leader three times. Uh, this just screams at me, DH, and and screams at me that you're a Boston fan. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Hey, it's your it's your list, man. You're allowed to have whoever you want. I mean, you might as well just put Edwin and Carson and Carnacion at first. Suit. <laughs> I don't care, okay, man. Yeah, man. It's okay. <laughs> really? You put him. You put him. Who'd you put third? You put David Ortiz. No, Better than this guy, <laughs> Keith Hernandez. Keith Hernandez. <laughs> yeah, I did. Really? <laughs> Come on, man. All right, you can have it. <laughs> I'm disappointed in you. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointed. Better. <laughs> okay. All right. I put Albert Pujols okay. at number two. That's why I put. I put Albert Pujols, NL Rookie of the Year in 2001, six NL Silver Sluggers. Three-time NL MVP, two-time NL Golden Gloves. So I mean, he can hit and he plays defense. Shout out David Ortiz. Hey man, I just want to talk about David Ortiz. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> uh, the stats that I have are only through 2016, but uh, he has a career of 310 in batting. Uh, on, on base percentage of 969. He had 2,749 hits in 2016, 575 home runs, 1,758 RBIs. So I put Pujols uh, above. Nice. Is that who you got first? Mm-hmm. That's it? Yeah, okay. I mean, how could you not? Right? Right. I, I, there, I don't think there was any debate. No. I don't think there was any debate there. But um, number number two, I got Albert Pujols, and I'm definitely putting Albert Pujols above David Ortiz. You know, honestly, <laughs> I really would too. But you just wanted to trigger me. Yeah, I did. Oh, I knew God. that would get him. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, Albert Pujols, number two for me. So number one, who you got? Lou Gehrig. That's who I got as number one as well. I mean, I don't think there's really any kind of debate here. He was good. Enough to be in the lineup when he was 20 years old, maybe even when he was 19. And his career was cut short by Lou Gehrig's disease. disease. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, that's and not funny, but it's... I, I, yeah. <laughs> and he is... Hold on, let me... Yeah. He was also the first player to ever have his number retired by a team. Okay. All right. So, I mean, if that tells you how much even then... They thought of the guy. You know, and another thing is is that I, I'd like to bring up about him is, is despite playing most of his career in the shadow of Babe Ruth, he ranks third in all time in slugging at 632. So, yeah. And his on-base percentage was 1.080, uh, fifth in on-base percentage. That's, you know, relatively rare for a first baseman if, if – and he if did, you look at stats. And he did also win a triple crown. Yes, he did. And he did also set two records well, for records. the MLB. One was for the number of grand slams. 
at 23. Oh, snap. Which was eventually broken by Alex Rodriguez. And then the other one was most consecutive games played at 2,130, which was eventually broken by, by Cal, Cal Ripken, Ripken Jr. Jr. But, I mean, those are... Those are things substantial numbers to consider when picking your greatest players. Yeah, all the time. and it didn't. It's not like they were broken like three seasons later. It took almost sixty years. Yeah, for sure. For those to be broken, right? Um, I also have Gehrig had nine seasons of three hundred and fifty plus total bases and nine straight years of at least one hundred and twenty runs scored, one hundred and twenty RBIs, and seventy extra base hits. He drove in more than a run per game five times in his career. And the last time he did that, he was 34. So impressive numbers. Uh, I like that we both put Lou Gehrig as as number one. So um, I think he deserves it. I I think so too. All right. I like that other than, and then, uh, you know, you putting David Ortiz, you silly man. Hey, whatever. It's okay. Haters going to hate. Haters going to hate. Just got to shake it off. Oh, all right, T Swizzy. <laughs> all right, so let's move on to second base. All right, you start this one. I got Joe Morgan. He played for okay. the Houston Colt 45s <laughs> and the Astros, the Cincinnati Reds, and then the Astros again, Giants, Phillies, and Athletics. He had a career batting average of 271 with 2,517 hits with 268 home runs and almost 150 or 1,150 runs batted in. And the guy stole bases like a madman. So uh, he had almost 700. Uh, and I guess not a madman, but enough that it was definitely worth noting. Um, he was a 10-time All-Star, two-time World Series champion, uh, MVP in the NL two times, five-time Golden Glove, and Silver Slugger. So I like to try and consider uh, when we're talking about this defensively on a standpoint as well as sure. offensively. So the uh, five-time gold glove definitely uh, yeah. it popped up, and I was like, yeah, t- this guy's got to be on my top three. Um, the Cincinnati Reds have him in the Hall of Fame for their team and retired number eight for him, as well as the Astros have him in the Hall of Fame. He's a member of the Baseball Hall of Fame and was inducted in 1990 with an 81% uh, first-round ballot. He was great offensively and defensively in his 22 career, 22-year 22 career. He had a 271 batting average and a 392 uh, on-base percentage. So, I mean... He also was one of the best defensive second basemen ever, uh, winning five golden gloves in the mid-70s. Uh, so that's why I got him at, at three. So three is Joe Morgan. I got uh, Roger Hornsby Okay, as my number three. He's a, a two-time NL MVP. He has one championship and two triple crowns. and But mostly – Yeah, I mean, there's that, and but see, he was okay defensively, or solid defensively, but then a good batter too. On top of that, with twenty nine hundred and thirty hits, three hundred three hundred and one home runs, fifteen hundred and eighty four RBIs, with a point. Uh, Three five eight lifetime batting average. Uh, Chelsea said, "Oh no, A Rod! Now he plays with J Lo. That's yeah, she went there." Uh, I don't know if you remember that he used to play for the Mariners. Uh, a Rod played for the Mariners. What? Yeah, I'm, I'm just kidding. Man, that's news. <laughs> yeah, and we do have two mics, Jeff. Um, so we're running uh, two different websites. So we got to catch up sound on both pages. Um, I actually have. Hornsby at one for me. Really? Yeah. Okay. Put him at one. So uh, we can. Interesting. Yeah. Who do you got at 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 two? At two, I have uh, Roberto Al- Alomar. Yeah. So I was definitely considering Roberto Alomar. Um, I remember watching him play. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely one of the best second basemen out there. 
Uh, tell me your stats that you got on him. Season, yeah, NL All Star, uh, eleven time AL All Star, ten time AL Gold Glove, All Star MVP, and two national championships. Yeah, I'm definitely on board with that. I almost put him on my top three, but he just didn't quite make it for me. I got Jackie Robinson at two. I got him at number one. Okay. I got Jackie Robinson at two. And the reason why I have that is because um, though the uh, barriers that he broke and the mold that he made for the rest of the way for baseball and the color barriers, um, his statistics were uh, just a little bit behind Roger Hornsby for me. See, you know, I – what – put him above for me was the rookie of the year in 1947. The inaugural season that the rookie year was made. Rookie but of the year I, was made that season. Well, that's true. But also I started, I was thinking about that today and I was like, really that wasn't his rookie season because he, he played in the Negro yeah, he leagues played in the for, Negro leagues since I think in 1942. I have it written down. Give me one second. 1945. 1945. 45. Yep. Uh, so but still, he had two seasons of good baseball. Before that, he played. That's not like playing in like a triple-A team. It was just segregation. I got you. you know, yeah. Unfortunately, but. Um, so Jackie made first-round ballot for a Hall of Fame uh, 77%, where Hornsby made 78% on a fifth-round ballot. Uh, you said it wrong. Love that team, 92 to 95. You're dreaming too big, Alphonse. That's right. <laughs> you guys in the closet now, go figure. Hey, whoa, bro. This guy, man. Um, so hit, his hitting uh, stats are undeniable, uh, you know, coming of the scoring era that he was in, which is why I had him uh, – above Jackie Robinson because I felt like there was a little bit more competition that I was looking at um, in comparison to what Jackie Robinson was. So, yeah. Um, and, and not to take anything away from Jackie. Not Robinson, at all. You, which I don't, I mean, you're not trying to or anything, but I don't want to say. I get what you're, I know where you're going to go with it. Okay. I know where you're going to go with it. Um, I just feel the, like his other contributions bear, outweigh him from for being sure. On. I I feel that another reason why I had Hornsby um, take away the fact of his stats for uh, playing in baseball, but the guy coached for almost twenty five years. Right. So I feel like his um, impact on other players. Um, during his time in the league. Okay. Made a little bit of a difference for me. Sure. I like that. So that's where we were at. I like that. That was a good – so that one was good. I mean, we don't have somebody stupid like David Petroya on there. I thought about <laughs> it. I, I did. <laughs> oh, man. I, I honestly – as a Boston fan, yeah, he was great to watch. I, I wouldn't – I don't think I would mm, – he might make the top ten, but – Was Garcia Parra a shortstop? I think Garcia Parra was a shortstop. Didn't he play for the, Man, usually the Red Sox I for a little while? I just the games. I don't really – Didn't he play for the Red Sox for a little while? He might have. No more. Like I Garcia said, Parra. before we started doing this, I just watched the games. I didn't really care about who was playing where or whatever. So gotcha. I know I didn't commit any of that information to knowledge. I was just like, oh, they're winning. Great. I'm going to watch. Okay. All or, right. Oh, they're going to lose. Uh, uh, well, I'll keep watching. <laughs> I feel it. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Okay. Where are you at on third base? You start this one. All right. Third base. I got Wade Boggs. Wade Boggs, okay. Yeah, All right. 12-time uh, All-Star, two gold gloves, and inducted in the Hall of Fame in 2005. I got Wade Boggs at two. Got Wade Boggs at two. I uh, didn't – I. this is before I really started, like, looking into it. So, for third base, I don't have um, hitting information. Okay. But 
Yeah, I mean, I could have seen Wade Boggs. No, I couldn't have seen that too. Who do you have at two? Well, what's your third? Well, my third is uh, Eddie Matthews. Okay, we are not going to have any of the same ones. Okay. At number two, I have uh, Brooks Robinson. Okay, so I looked at him. Um, do you have any of his stats? I don't have his stats, but so he – God damn it, dog. So he played 23 seasons with the Orioles, which is the longest career spent with one team. Okay. And he won 16 consecutive gold gloves and an 18-time All-Star – and he won two World Series championships. Damn, okay. AL MVP in 1964 and World Series MVP in 1970. He got a first-round ballot in 91%. Yes, he did. Oof. And 1983. You got him at two? I got him at two. Okay. Damn, okay. I like that. Okay. I <laughs> Maybe Wade Boggs should have been three, three on my list. I like that because uh, – I have Eddie Matthews had a 271 batting average. Uh 2315 in hits uh against uh Brooks's 2848. And then in the home runs department, uh Eddie hit 512 where Brooks hit 686. Or 280, 268, excuse me. Sorry, this got unplugged. I'm just trying to plug my laptop back in. This dog is causing a nuisance, bro. Hey, come here. Come here. Yeah, I mean, I think what really sold him, what sold Robinson for me on number two was the uh, 16 consecutive gold gold gloves. Man, that's a. Whew. That's brutal, man. I like that. Uh, You know, I. I can't debate that one, man. I, I just I don't can't. really understand how I, how can you argue a 16, 16 gold straight gold, gold gold 16 yeah, straight. straight yeah 16 straight yeah yeah from, I wish I had written down the years but yeah it was it's like, from 1960 to 1975. Yeah okay yeah that was yeah <sighs> crazy. crazy that's <laughs> seriously that's insane. Um, I like the Boggs pick. Uh okay so I'm I dude I I I totally agree with you I t- <laughs> I totally agree with you um I got Boggs at at two though but um the reason why I had uh Matthews was he was kind of a forgotten star of the fifties and sixties where Matthews hit three oh two the age of twenty one and spent the rest of his career trying to live up to the expectations of uh, other players in the league, uh, which was kind of unfair because everybody else at that time was, you know, just just smashing balls. Uh, He finished with 512 home runs, similar to Mike Schmidt in many ways, uh, except he wasn't quite the same uh, defensively. Uh, Before Hank Aaron, Matthews was the brave slugger and the only player to play in all three cities where the Braves franchise called home. Hmm. So, uh, you know, I mean, it's not a crazy statistic, but I mean, it's, it's interesting out there. Um, yeah. So that's why I had him at three, but I, man, I think your dude definitely needs to Brooks Robinson needs to be at two and Wade Boggs needs to be at three. Glad we were all in agreement. Yeah, I totally agree with that. You just completely changed my mind. Uh, Wade Boggs, I have at two, though, uh, with a 328 batting average. Let's compare the batting averages. So Brooks's batting average was 267. Well, and remember then, that Wade Boggs started off slow. Yeah. Yeah, his, his in the beginning, he was not nearly as good a batter as, as he right, became. Right. Um. The home runs were not even close. Uh, Brooks definitely smashed on Wade. Um, a 12-time All-Star. How many times is it? 18-time All-Star for Brooks. Yeah. Um, then we got two gold gloves versus that 16, man. Yeah. That's, that's, that's dirty. A, yeah. Eight-time Silver Slugger where Brooks doesn't have any. 
Okay. I still don't think eight-time Silver Slugger is better than 16 straight. Um, five-time AL batting champion, though, for Wade Boggs. That's a good one. That is a good one. That's a good one. Like that. And it was from uh, in 1983 and then 95 to 88, or 85 to 88. So he did it consistently for a little bit. Um, like the Boggs pick. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm totally agreeing on that. Where are you at on uh, number one? Number one, I got Jimmy Collins. Really? Yeah. Really? Yes. Okay. So <sighs> Jimmy Collins played fourteen years in I guess you would call it the MLB. And the reason that I have him as number one is because even today he's considered the pioneer of modern third baseman defensive play. Okay. And Jimmy. Jimmy Collins. Collins. So, I mean, if you're going to have a guy – that has defined defensive play for an entire position. To me, that that seemed like kind of a no-brainer. Mm. Okay. All right. And if you're going to hold a guy up for a uh, you know, a gold standard, if you will. I'm just trying to see where other people have placed him on this because I, I didn't see anything about him on ESPN. But yeah, I, wow, okay. My knowledge of him is is not extensive enough for me to uh, even remotely debate that. Six time All Star, he did Noma. Okay, um, I got Mike Schmidt at one. And basically across the board of everything that I looked at, everybody else had Mike Schmidt at one as well. well that's why mean. I was – that was uh, – that's why I'm so shocked by it. Um, he also won the, first, comes, er, won the first ever uh, World Series, 1903. 1903. NL home, home run leader, 1898. Boston Red Sox Hall of Fame. Uh a 294 batting average is better than Mike Smith's 267. The guy didn't play for very long, did he? Oh, well, his numbers aren't his so he didn't bat very well. No, he didn't bat very well. But defensively, that's what you're saying is Yeah, that's what sold cornerstone for, for And yeah, I mean if you're going to have a guy out there you know, if you're going to compare every hitter to Babe Ruth you're going to compare every third baseman to, you know, a Jimmy Collins. It's going to be my number one. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I got Mike Schmidt. And uh, Mike Schmidt was a 12-time All-Star, a World Series champion, an NL MVP three times, a World Series MVP, 10-time Gold Glove Award winner, six-time Silver Slug Award winner, nine or eight-time NL home run leader, and four-time NL RBI leader. I think the home run leader and the gold glove ten times really sold it for me. Oh, absolutely. Um, he is in the Baseball Hall of Fame and the retired number 20 for the uh, Philadelphia Phillies. He was a first-round ballot at 96%. I think that's I a solid to- pick. I like I like your pick too. I didn't I just didn't uh didn't think about it as like a a defensive standpoint. I was just looking at it as like sure a whole all around. And that I, I he was he wasn't the first one I I looked up for third base, but once I started thinking about it, I don't know all the other things just kind of went out the window. And then when I just started reading all these, you know, commentators or whatever, and just like, you know, but this guy, you know. Okay. Kind of started it all. Right. So. I feel it. Like, eh, number one. 
All right. Well, we can save the um, the catcher conversation and the shortstop conversation for outfield later. Or do you want to do it? Do you want to do a shortstop real quick? You got I shortstop? Can, I got shortstops. You got shortstops? I don't have shortstops. So uh, I'll just read off of some of these that I have. Tell me why, where you got it. Why don't you do the, the ESPN and okay. I'll do mine. Okay. Uh, so for third, which I'm already disagreeing with because they have – Kyle Ripken Jr. at four, and he I feel like he's definitely in my top three. I actually have him at number two. At number two? Yeah, I'm definitely putting Kyle Ripken Jr. in my top three, and they have him at four. They have Ernie Banks at three. Uh, Ernie Banks was a 14-time All-Star, two-time MVP, gold glove one time, and Hall of Famer. His career stats for hitting were 274. Everybody loves Ernie Banks, but the truth is he only had half – a great career. In the first part, he was the greatest shortstop ever, a power hitting two time MVP. Then his knees went bad and he moved to first base. Okay. All right. I see. I'm not putting Alex Rodriguez in my top three, man. Are you? Did you? <clears throat> no, number three, I have Honus Wagner. Yep. That's what they got as well. Uh, Hall of Fame, championship with Pittsburgh. Uh, eight batting titles, an AL record that still stands. What's that? The eight batting titles. And That's crazy. Yeah, led the league in hitting six times and stolen bases five times, 101 home runs, uh, 1,732 RBIs, and a 328 career batting average. Oh, no. Swag. And also – the most collectible um, baseball card. Really? Mm-hmm. Man, that guy's got an ugly mug. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he is not he, an attractive he is man. A, he is a good it thing. Is, he was a good athlete. Yeah, because... no kidding. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> got hit with the ugly stick for real. He didn't. He Holy he, shit, bro. Yeah, bro. He got, he got a straight ass whoop with the ugly <laughs> stick. <laughs> Oh, damn, son. Eight-time NL batting champion. Five-time NL RBI leader. Five-time NL stolen base leader. You can't argue with that. You can't. The numbers right there speak for themselves there. He was 95% in a first-round ballot to make the Hall of Fame. What really sold him to me for – my number three pick was that even Ty Cobb was like, that guy was amazing. Look at this, dude. He bad 329. 329. No, I had 328, but still. He did not play for very long, though. No. Did not play for very long. 3,430 hits for how long he played, though. Mm-hmm. Okay. And 722 stolen bases. Yeah, that's that's a that's a wow. Yeah, okay. Dude was fast. Yeah, no kidding. Well, you got to be fast if it looked like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Did Cal Ripken Jr. play shortstop? Uh no, I think Cal Ripken Jr. played third base, didn't he? No, he played no, shortstop. He played, yeah, he yeah, played yeah. shortstop. Yeah, he played shortstop. We literally just talked about this. Yep. I don't know why I said that, why I'm spacing out. I'm sorry. And honestly – I'm dumb. I I probably would have put uh, A-Rod in the top three. Not me. But I could put two Yankees in the top three. Uh, so <laughs> – So I got Cal Ripken at number two. My My biggest thing – my biggest thing is is the guy was get let's let's pull up Alex Rodriguez's stats here real quick. Alex Rodriguez. I don't believe he was that great defensively. And you know, maybe this is just me being I hate Alex Rodriguez cuz I'm a Mariners fan. That too. But 14-time All-Star, World Series champion, three-time AL MVP, Two-time Gold Glove, 
two-time gold glove. So maybe he was a little bit better than I was expecting. Than what I was thinking. Cal Ripken also has two gold gloves. I'm definitely putting uh, Cal Ripken before Alex Rodriguez simply on the fact that the guy was Iron Man. And yeah. Alex Rodriguez, the numbers that he put up, phenomenal. Great. Good for you. But Cal Ripken Jr. went in there every day and played. And you can count on him. And I like the reliability. And reliability in sports, to me, is one of the most important things. Yeah, I, I wrote down uh, Lou Gehrig's record. I didn't write down Cal Ripken's record for consecutive games, though. What was uh, what was Lou Gehrig's? Lou Gehrig? Yeah. It was... Cal Rip. Yeah. Uh. 2,130. 2,130. Lou Gehrig's streak of 2,130 that stood for 56 years that many thought were deemed unbreakable. Uh, Ripken holds the record for consecutive games played at 2,632. So he not only destroyed that unbreakable record, he basically pooped on it. Yeah. (laughs) By 500 games. Yeah. That's that's two seasons. Yeah. Yeah. That's over two seasons. That's definitely over two seasons. Yep. Definitely. Yep. (laughs) They play 162 games, right? Yeah. Uh, Wow. Uh, yeah, definitely. To, I'm, dude. So, hey, I would. I, I don't know, man. I'm putting Cal Ripken Jr. at my two. That's where I would do Hannes Wagner. Obviously, after all of the stats that we just went over, I, he, I'm putting him at at uh, uh, one. Then oh. Cal Ripken. Because I have, I have Honus Wagner at three, Cal Ripken at two. Really? Mm-hmm. Who do you have at one? Derek Jeter. Oh, really? Yeah. Why? Well, ESPN has him at five. His entire career was at the Yankees. Five championships. He's the Yankees' all-time career hit leader. Is 2,747 stolen bases? Is that right? That can't be right. They don't have stolen bases here on Wikipedia for me. Okay. Well, don't quote me on that because I might have had a brain fart and wrote too many numbers. 14-time All-Star, 5-time Gold Glove, 5-time Silver Slugger, and 2-time Hank Aaron Award. Uh, skirt! Go back. What would you say? You said how many Hank Aaron Awards? That's two. Two. The Hank Aaron Award is just when uh, you're the top hitter, right? I, I believe we so, have yeah. the most hits. Yeah, it is. What's the Roberto Clemente award? That's like the I, game of sportsmanship I just being like a nice guy. Yeah, I think that's kind of like the Walter Payton award. His di- I don't know if you knew this. I actually looked at um, on my Facebook memories uh, when he retired the day he retired that uh, the Yankees retired number two. The Yankees officially became the only team in the league to have every single single digit number retired. Hmm. Yeah. Facts, bro. That's cool. Yeah. Yankees team captain, Monument Park honoree. Um, Let's look at this, man. Did you look at his. I'm going to pull up a Hannes real quick. And then I pulled up his stolen bases here as well. 358. Oh, okay, I wrote it down wrong. Yeah, holy yeah, shit, 2,000. Yeah, I was insane. like, that can't be right. That's like five a game, bro. I don't know what the hell I was trying to write then. Uh, five is a bit excessive, but that's like one a game. 
He has. I was going for something else. Can't remember what it was though. What was the number you gave me? Two thousand what? Yeah, it was two thousand seven hundred forty-seven. I don't know where you got that from. I was also listening to something on the computer, so fair I enough. Have gotten sidetracked. <laughs> um, let's look at this. So we got hits three thousand four hundred thirty. I think Derek Jeter is going to smash that. 3,465. So not that much. His batting average was better than Derek Jeter's. Also did not play as many seasons. Home runs, 260. Home runs, 101. Runs batted in. 1,311 for Jeter. 1,732 for Hannes. They're pretty close. I can I, I actually respect your Derek Jeter at one. And I I can take that. I, I think the one that did it for me was the uh, five five gold time gold glove. Yeah. Defensively the guy was really good. And Honus Wagner was fourteen two. time all star. Like I know all star games are kinda like mm, like whatever. But fourteen times is to me they kind of mean a little bit more in baseball than, than they, they do in football. football. Yeah. For sure. Five-time World Series champion. Can't dispute that one. Now, well, now go back to when Honus Wagner played, because did they even have the World Series then? When was the World Series? It was in 1903 was the first World Series. I was just going to say 1908. Is it 1903? 1903. His last season as a player was 1917. So he only played four Four, seasons. 14 seasons. 14 seasons. Mm. So, I don't know, man. I can take I can take Derek Jeter as one. I can accept that. And, and I think Alex Rodriguez is definitely not in my top three, though. Yeah. I don't know if that's how you're feeling, but in oh, even totally. well, even 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 if even if, right even if that is the case, the dude played uh, third base for the Yankees. Uh, for the majority of the time, if I'm not mistaken. And I think most of his... When a lot of people give Derek Jeter a lot of credit for the Yankees' success through you know the early 2000s, mid-90s. Right. So when a team like the Yankees is, and you're the player that people are like, that guy. They wouldn't Dude, do the same without that guy. The guy played for the Yankees more than he played for the Rangers and the Mariners combined. That's where he played shortstop. I'm not putting him at shortstop. I'm putting him at third base. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. sorry. I was talking about A-Rod. Yeah, look at this. From 94 to 2000 and 2001 to 2003 is when he played third base because he's not playing – or a shortstop, excuse me, because he's not playing sh- third base or a shortstop in front of Derek Jeter for the Yankees. Right. And he played for the Yankees from 2004 to 2013 and then got that PED scandal and then 2015 and 2016. So he played more time in New York at third base, which is why I'm sticking him at – at third base, he's not in my shortstop. He wasn't even a thought of my shortstop conversation. So you have Derek Jeter one, mm-hmm. Hannes two. Nope, Cal Ripken Jr. Two. Cal Ripken Jr. two, and Hoss Wagner is three. Okay. Well, just from the discussion that we've had, um, I'm gonna go uh, Hannes one. Jeter two, Ripken three. Okay. Okay. I, I, like I like that. Uh, I like that list too. I just. You see this? They got Robbie Cano at ten. Yeah, I did base. see that. That's that was silly. Like, I was like, Get that's here. silly. Don't you stop that? That's silly. God, the guy's a great player, no doubt, for sure. Oh yeah. But there's been many, 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 many men that have filled that position that I feel are way better, way better. 
Um, so why don't we uh, next week we hit on uh, hold on let me check these comments again sorry I was reading a whole bunch of stuff uh, dude a rod was insane it was dumb when he left Seattle about to circle game a rod's ass if I see him in person Maddox <laughs> is my number one picture yeah yo you remember Brett Boone said that too Brett Boone said uh, Greg Maddox was the hardest pitcher that he ever faced. I was shocked by it because, you know, Brett Boone played for a while and he saw a lot of different pitchers. Yeah. But um, Greg Maddox is definitely one of the greatest pitchers of all time. I'd put him in my top three. Well, I'll have to wait till We'll have week. that conversation. Yeah. Um, I think uh, – I don't know how you feel about this, but uh, we smacked down on uh, outfield as, as a left field, center field, right field – in the majority of the time uh, of which you positioned in that spot. So if a guy was moved from center to left and spent the rest of his career in left for the majority of it, he's we consider fielder. he's a left fielder. Okay. You like that? Yeah. Okay. So we'll do catchers, right field, left field, center field, and pitchers next week. All right. And then I think we should hit some, uh, some football uh, positions – uh, you know, I don't probably not next week, but the week following. Okay, we'll do football. I'd like to see some basketball thrown in there as well. I'd like to have that conversation Michael because you know, Michael Jordan is the greatest center of all time, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it, is. it doesn't matter what the position is. It is Michael Jordan. It's Michael Jordan. Yes. Michael, Michael Jordan's Jordan. the greatest head coach of all time, too. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jordan is the best animated character of all time. Michael Jordan is the best person to ever play with Bugs Bunny. <laughs> and Bill Murray on the same team. And Bill Murray. Oh, he carried damn. that team. Yeah. <laughs> he did carry that team. I would love for you to make that list, man. Well, who you else is be... going to do it? Yosemite Sam? <laughs> Come on, no. man. Marvin Martian, though? Ooh. He's so yo. <laughs> <laughs> I would love for you to make a list, Devin. Um, it would be phenomenal to get you included in it. Um, we can actually maybe even get you to call in and uh, talk to us. Uh, yeah. we'll, maybe we'll talk pictures with you. We'll give you. We'll give you a segment where you can tell us about your favorite pictures of all time. Off-topic, unreal game in St. Louis right now. Don't tell me that, Samantha, because I am so not watching it, and I haven't recorded. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> All right. Now I want to get off the air and watch the hockey game. So thank you guys. We're talking to fair sports. Later. Check out uh Tabby's Coffee. Get your tickets at seatgeek.com. Uh use promo code GCSN. All right. Peace. Till next week. Till next week.